Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about weekly knowledge points in The War Within. Not only are we going to talk about exactly how to obtain these knowledge points, as well as how many you're going to get every single week, but we're going to be talking about some artisan acuity tips, as well as a few extra tips and tricks to help you save time, as well as a little bit of gold each week. But without further ado, we're going to dive right in, so I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started. Now, up first, if you guys are just looking for the simple answer of how many knowledge points can I get each week, I have actually consolidated all of this information into a spreadsheet, which you'll see on screen right now, and you can also find it in the description down below. What I recommend is actually opening up that spreadsheet because things are subject to change. I'm currently recording this video after the first live NA reset, so some things could be found out after this video, and I'll always keep that spreadsheet updated. Additionally, if you guys are interested in Artisan Acuity, every single knowledge point, weekly knowledge point I should say, is going to reward you 5 Artisan Acuity. So for example, if you see 15 knowledge points on that list, all you need to do is 15 times 5, and that's the expected Artisan Acuity you can expect to get every single week. There are additional weekly sources of Artisan Acuity, which mainly comes from one of these sources, which we'll talk about in just a second, but if you're just looking for a quick overview, feel free to take a look at that spreadsheet. The second resource I quickly want to shout out in this video is actually a Weekora. This was created by one of our Discord members, so shout out to them, a link will be in the description, but this will allow you to track all of your one-time as well as weekly sources. So for example, you'll see that I haven't been able to collect any of my treasures on these characters, so you'll see all of the treasures listed here, as well as those one-time note sources, and also the weekly sources, which I'm just about to talk about. As you collect these, the weak aura will shrink, because as you collect it, it will go away, and of course, the weekly knowledge points will reset every single week. So just in case you, you know, stop by and get some treasures during questing, or you can't really remember if you've gotten all your treasure drops, etc., you can check back on this week aura and it'll tell you exactly what you still have left to do. Another great feature is that if you have TomTom, Tom, you can actually click on one of these items and it'll actually automatically load the TomTom Tom waypoint and take you directly there, so that also saves on some time but I highly recommend picking up this week aura as well. Like I said, it'll be in the link in the description, and let's first get started with some of these weekly sources. Now, up first, something that existed in Dragonflight and is back for the War Within is your simple treaties. Treaties are crafted by scribes. You can craft one every single week for yourself, or you can decide to stock up on them now, and you can use one every single week for a single knowledge point, as well as five artisan acuity. These treaties are BOP, meaning you'll either have to send a personal work order to a scribe or you'll have to post a public one to get these crafted, and right now they are a little bit expensive due to the prices of reagents, but it's definitely worth to just quickly get a knowledge point every single week without much effort. Additionally, if you are actually a scribe yourself and you decide to spec all the way into the pursuit of knowledge for a total of 30 points, you'll actually gain two points from your personal treaty instead of just one. This only applies to inscription and you have to be specced into this, but it can be nice to gain an extra point, and that's also how you can get ahead of other scribes who happen to not be specced into this. Up next, we have Treasure Drops, which has also existed in Dragonflight, however, this only applies to your crafting professions. Every single profession has two Treasure Drops, and they just drop from all of the generic treasures that you can find around the map. This includes the digging dirt that you can get that either spawns a creature or some sort of, you know, mini event, and this also includes the different, like, machinist chest and all of that that you can see around the map. In terms of how many knowledge points you're actually going to get does depend on the profession. Like I said, every single profession has two drops, but those drops are either going to reward one knowledge point or two knowledge points each. The outliers are alchemy, inscription, and jewel crafting, which will reward two each, meaning four in total, while all the other crafting professions will have one each or two in total. Up next, every single profession, so this includes gathering as well as crafting, has a single weekly quest. This is different from Dragonflight, normally you're used to two or even three, but in this case you only have one, and depending on your profession, this quest looks slightly different. 
For gathering professions, as well as enchanting, you're going to have a simple trainer quest. You can go to your trainer, your profession trainer in the main city, and you'll be rewarded a quest where you basically just need to turn in a specific item or items, and you'll gain three knowledge points, as well as 15 artisan acuity. A quick note, if you are watching this video at the time of it being uploaded, the weekly quest for enchanting is currently disabled. I personally believe this is just an oopsie because it was accidentally enabled in early access, so I have a feeling they turned it off and forgot to turn it back on. So I'd expect it to show up at some point either when this video is released or shortly after. All of your other crafting professions outside of enchanting has a crafting order quest. You can find this quest kind of behind the skinning and leatherworking area where you picked up your one-time packet of Artisan Acuity. This is inside that little work order building. You can pick up a work order quest. It will ask you to complete some crafting orders. This can be public, personal, NPC, etc. And this rewards a specific amount of knowledge points. For most professions, this is only going to reward you 2 points, so 10 Artisan Acuity, while for Engineering, you're actually only going to get 1 point. Up next, the biggest source of knowledge points for your crafting professions outside of Enchanting are your Patron Crafting Orders. This is also called NPC Crafting Orders, they were recently renamed towards the end of Beta. But what you're going to have to do is go over to a crafting workbench, then you're going to have to go over to crafting orders, and you'll see a handful of patron orders. Depending on your crafting level, you'll either see 10 or 12 total orders, but you'll see the exact same amount of knowledge points. For most professions, you're going to see 12 knowledge points, and you'll see this through different sort of glimmers. For example, right here, this is blacksmithing, so you'll see this glimmer of blacksmithing knowledge, and you'll notice that this gives two knowledge points each. If we look at this whole entire list, we see one glimmer, two, three, four, five, and six, so for a total of six glimmers, or 12 knowledge points. The only difference is alchemy, engineering, and jewel crafting, you'll see four glimmers instead, so for a total of eight. Like I said before, it doesn't matter how many patron orders you see, out of how many you see, you're always going to either see 8 or 12, depending on the profession. Additionally, you'll also see other rewards. A big one is Artisan Acuity. So outside of all the weekly Artisan Acuity that you can get through knowledge points, this is another source, and you'll see that some of them reward 30, while some of them only reward 10. These payouts that you see are actually additional materials. You can get them and open up some materials, so that can just give you a little bit of gold. And you'll also come across these finishing reagents that you can either sell or use yourself that will give you some bonus skill. Now, the hardest thing about these patron orders is that you actually have to complete them. For example, this right here is kind of a simple craft, and this rewards two knowledge points. A big factor is, first of all, you need to have the recipe, which in this case I do. You also need to be able to do and reach the minimum quality, which in this case is quality 2, which in this case, yet again, I do. However, the issue is right here is that you also have to potentially actually use your own reagents. In this case, the customer provided their own alloy, but they're expecting me to provide my null stone. And on the outside, this looks like a pretty simple craft, you know, only a quality to knife that's pretty simple to get, but this null stone is 3.5 thousand gold. So basically, I'm paying, you know, 3.5 thousand gold for two knowledge points, which can be a little bit pricey for some people. This issue, you know, gets even worse if we take a look at this right here. You know, by default, I have this recipe unlocked. However, I don't have the ability to add an embellishment, meaning I can't even do this if I wished. I would have to spec into this exact weapon spec, you know, with blades to actually be able to use an embellishment to even get these two points. On top of that, they're also expecting me to use my reagents, and also I have to guarantee a quality three which if I decide to use quality one reagents, I can't do. So not only do I need to, you know, be able to use this embellishment, but I'll have to be able to guarantee quality three, which either means I'm overpaying for materials or I'm gonna have to use my concentration. 
Additionally, some things are just really, really insane right here for these two knowledge points. Thankfully, they're providing all reagents, so it's not necessarily expensive. But yet again, this is, you know, a high-end spark craft and needs to be a quality four. And I also have to use an embellishment. So this is just super hard to do. You know, it requires difficulty 500 and my skill is 186. So, like I said, in theory, I could get 12 knowledge points, but automatically I can't do, you know, two of those, so four points are already out the window. Now, something to bring up and something we're not exactly sure what's going to happen on live servers is that most of these NPC work orders are on the same schedule as World Quest, meaning they reset twice a week. In theory, you should not get more than those 12 or 8 knowledge points, however, it should potentially reset some of these issue areas. For example, this one right here rewards, you know, two glimmers, however, I can't do this because I don't have this embellishment, and it expires in about three days. Theoretically, if I don't craft this, this should refresh with another glimmer item, which hopefully I can craft, or maybe I still can't, but that at least gives me a second chance. We'll have to see exactly what happens when that, you know, timer runs out. Potentially, maybe more knowledge points will show up. That never happened in beta, but like I said, some things are still up in the air. Now, in terms of some tips and tricks, what I would highly recommend is you get yourself a few different profession tools. Many of you, it ultimately depends on what type of crafter or profession you're trying to set up, but a lot of you probably have multi-craft tools. Just because you're probably going for high skill, you want a lot of multi-craft to make the most gold possible. But with these NPC crafting orders, I highly recommend picking up a resourcefulness as well as an ingenuity tool. For example, the reason why I recommend this is that in some scenarios, let's say we were just able to craft this because I had this unlocked, you know, I need a quality three. So of course I can decide to, you know, up my quality of materials to hopefully reach that quality three mark, or I will be relying on concentration. And so in scenarios where you can't really avoid using concentration, you might as well quickly equip an ingenuity tool to up your chance of refunding your concentration. If you're not specced into concentration, you'll only get 50% back, but you know, if we have to use 200 here and it procs and we get, you know, 95 back, that still saves you a lot more concentration that you can use either on another NPC work order or to actually just craft a different item. Additionally, what I highly recommend is also picking up a resourcefulness tool. The reason why is just in case people don't know, let's say you are crafting some sort of reagent or stackable item and you proc a multi-craft in a work order, that multi-craft goes to the buyer. So in this case, it would go to the NPC or, you know, if you're doing something for a real player, that real player would get it. However, if you proc resourcefulness on, let's say, an armor piece or really anything, that resourcefulness proc stays with you, the crafter. So let's just say theoretically we have this recipe, we can craft it, and we can guarantee that quality for just how it wants it, they are actually supplying all of these reagents. So instead of using a multi-craft tool that won't even affect this craft, you can use resourcefulness and if it procs, you might get yourself back two sanctified ingots, or you might get five iron claw ingots back, which you can either use on your own crafts or you can sell that for a lot of gold. At the moment, you know, rank two sanctified alloy go for like 3000 gold, according to TSM, don't know how that true that is, but let's say you proc two of them, that's just 6000 gold in your pocket. Of course, in this case, you know, we can't even craft the item, but that's just some way to save some extra gold. But yeah, this is kind of the biggest source around knowledge points. We'll have to see exactly how this adapts and how Blizzard changes this throughout the expansion. Right now, you know, the hardest part is actually having these recipes and meeting these qualities, but theoretically, if you can get them all done, you should be looking at either 8 or 12 knowledge points for each of your professions. And moving on, we do have one final source, and this is for all of your gathering professions, as well as enchanting. Enchanters can actually gain 9 knowledge points through simply disenchanting. 
And so the quality of materials that you disenchant doesn't matter. This can be, you know, crafted green or blue gear. This can be found BOEs you found in a dungeon or in the open world. This can be, you know, mythic gear that you've decided to get rid of. Whatever it is, as long as you disenchant an item, you'll have the possibility of gaining knowledge points. These knowledge points drop in a combination of six items. So you're looking for one epic crystal, which will reward four points, and five rare ones, which will give one each for a total of nine. In my testing, I've gotten them all within, you know, 20 disenchants, but at the end of the day, it'll come down to RNG. Then lastly, for gathering, we have the rest of the gathered knowledge points, which simply you just need to go out there, collect herbs, skin mobs, or collect ore, and you'll gain a handful of knowledge points. In our beta testing, we only got anywhere between 7 to 9 weekly gathering points, but it seems like they've increased that by 5 points on live servers. We don't know exactly if that is just for this one reset to kind of give gatherers a little bit of an advantage since they couldn't really get much in early access, or this is simply just a way to speed up their progression. We'll have to see exactly what it looks like next week, but anywhere between 7 to potentially like 15 knowledge points per profession. Like I said, it's listed in that spreadsheet, but your main source of knowledge points for your gathering professions will be simply gathering. But yeah guys, that's about it for weekly knowledge point sources. If you guys want to know more about one-time sources, treasures, etc., there's also a one-time source list on the spreadsheet that you can check out, but that's kind of self-explanatory. You can also find it in the week or which I talked about at the beginning of this video to help you with that as well. But everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below. Keep in mind, this is early information, so things are still subject to change, but this should at least give you a good foundation to get started. But thank you guys as always, and have a great day.